Hi, today we're going to test the cheap soldering station and the expensive soldering station. We know that people want to find out how the cheap ones performs compared to the expensive ones. So today we made this video to help you to make a right decision before you purchase a soldering station. So for a good example, we have a Weller WES51. It's like $120 online. And I know we know uh, we know that there are more expensive ones out there. But if you are not doing soldering for making a living, then you don't need a better one than this one. It's got a temperature control knob in the front and the power buttons and that's all it's got. And I think that's all you need to do soldering. And here we got the cheaper soldering station and it's not just a soldering station, it's got the hot air gun too. So it's a twin one SMD workstation. Uh, we paid $120 about two years ago. Now it could be more. But at $120 it's got two features in one box. In the front it looks very fancy. It's got the display for the temperature and the temperature control knobs on and off switch and it's also got the auto or manual temperature control switch looks very fancy and the good thing about this device you can watch the real-time temperature as you work on your electronics okay then let's do a test the first test we're going to do is we're gonna set the temperature for both devices at 350 celsius it's like 650 to 660 fahrenheit and then we're going to see how well and how fast it melts the solder on real electronic circuit board let's get started this is the cheaper soldering station at 350 celsius i'm trying to melt the solder on one of those components leg and it's doing nothing this solder should be melt at 350 that is enough temperature but it's not melting now at 370c will it melt the solder mm, looks no good and it doesn't let me try to make better contact with the soldering iron and no, still doesn't melt the solder. How about the good soldering station, the Weller WES51? Let's see. Yeah, after some time, it started to melt. And it's doing really well. Okay, then let's find out at what temperature does the cheaper soldering iron melt the solder? We have tried many different temperature settings 380, 390, 400, and 410 but finally at 420 it started to melt even at 420 celsius this chip iron took f more than 5 seconds to start melting this solder on one of those component leg so basically after the test we can see that the cheaper one performs worse why is that is it because of a wrong temperature gauge or temperature readings i don't think so it is because as soon as you touch the circuit board with your iron tips the temperature actually drops right away because the heat spread through the board if you set your temperature as 350 C as soon as you touch the board with your iron tip the iron tip temperature will drop down to maybe 300 or even worse so in easy word you are losing temperature as soon as you touch something with your iron tip but the good soldering machines, they have a good ability to keep the temperature steady. Now let's try something different. We're gonna apply a new solder on uh, existing solder points 
or sort of joints and let's see what happens if you watch it carefully the solder the new solder melts on the tip but it's not hot enough to make everything melt and you're gonna have this exact same problem when you're using a cheaper soldering station this is the one of the biggest reason that you should avoid a cheaper stations people purchase cheaper stations to save money but it's not about saving money if you do solder like this you'll also damage all the components and circuit boards and imagine that you are trying to make money doing soldering uh, but in the end you ruin it then you're gonna be spending more money so when you are looking for a soldering station don't buy a cheap one just get a nice one and use it for a long time without any issues it is now time to take a look at the expensive soldering station not expensive but good soldering station as you see as soon as I apply new solder it also melts the existing solder together and it combines and it becomes one solder mass a good soldering station will make your job a lot easier so don't buy the cheaper ones anymore just get a good one and use it the circuit board I'm working on is the TB power board so everything is huge but imagine that you're working on a smartphone like iPhone logic boards everything is so tiny that you cannot see with your eyes and they are very sensitive to small parts if you use cheaper irons like that you'll ruin everything when it comes to micro soldering you have to finish it really quickly but precisely so it is important to have a good soldering machines like wellers or hacko and remember not to purchase a cheap soldering station thank you for watching